Indeed, uh, it's very simple, and of course, uh, in the globalized era, it is uh, imperative to uh, explore the scope that you can use to your own uh, advantage. Uh, rounding off with you, Mr. Elijah Inoako, there is something uh, that is very imperative. When we talk about African problems, when we talk about the issues affecting the continent Africa, be it political, economic, or otherwise, there is one aspect which we always want to touch, the mindset. When Mr. Wally was talking about his uh, uh, exchange with some personnel there in uh, Congo Brazzaville, and uh, the response that was given to him, of course, uh, you now see how the uh, ideological war or some sort of uh, mindset uh, a, a negative mindset is actually hampering uh, the transformation of the continent Africa. So as an intellectual and somebody who is very keen on African development, what do you think we can do at the right parameters to be able to start working uh, on the mindset of, of Africans, especially those at the fore, to, able, to be able to see Africa as one entity in spite of our differences, but then let's look at, at that uh, point uh, where we can meet and compromise and collaborate for the uh, benefit of the, the, the African continent in its entirety. Uh, Clarice, I will just summarize by saying this. I also spoke to somebody from the, uh, who's very close to the African Union in terms of gathering data and some of the research that we do. It, I realize one weakness with the African Union. There are no timelines. You and I have talked on this show about the uh, stopping gun blazing that failed. And when you go to dig into why it failed, there were no timelines. We've been talking about the Agenda 2026. Yeah. By now, the African Union should have put on guidelines and timelines to say every single African country, by this date, you have liberalized your visa process. By this date, you have done A, B, C. By this date, otherwise, you lose certain privileges within the African Union. You give deadlines, you give timeline, you give specification to countries because this kind of mentality, like Mr. Wallen mentioned, is because people are working in isolation. That country, this country is afraid that if we open our borders, these people are going to come here, they're going to take our jobs, like what's happening in South Africa, xenophobia. We thank God for people like Julius Malema that's opening the eyes of Africans to understand that. An African, because if you look at what's happening in South Africa, our fellow brothers in South Africa, blacks, they have no problem with the white people in South Africa. That's not their problem. They have no problem with the Indians in South Africa. They have, that's not their problem. They have no problems even with the rest of, you know, Caucasians, they have no problem. Their problem is Nigerians, Zimbabweans, Mozambique, and so on. Then that's what we call self-hate. Self-hate. You see your brother as your enemy. Instead of realizing that you are being manipulated upon for selfish interest. So mindset needs to be changed in such a way that the African Union need to take the lead and put timeline and conditions and say, every country that has not met this guideline by this deadline, you're going to lose your privileges within the African Union. So that countries start working towards that agenda, not setting an agenda and put it on the table. And by the time we come 2063, nothing has happened. I put it very clearly to the leader that I was talking to. I said, look, if I have a chance to work with you guys, these are things I'm going to push for. In 20, by 2040, we must see concrete actions on the ground in terms of the preamble of 2063. We must see actions. And any country that has not met those deadlines, we were talking about security, for example. You're going to give condition to country and say, look, the insecurity that's happening in your country, if you do not put that into order by this date, you're going to lose your privileges. Equals is only interested in trying to go to Niger and put sanctions on Niger and do this, but they find they don't do anything in terms of making sure that that country, you know, they meet some of the deadlines in the Agenda 2063. All they are doing, is, oh, there's a coup d'etat, but they did not look at the internal wranglings and the problems that are in that country. So African unions must take the bull by the horns. 
Make sure that some of those guidelines and those preambles are being upon. Give every country a deadline because, like Wale said, yeah. the specific specificities within Africa are different from country to country. But if they work with the union, work with the countries that are involved, give those guidelines her the issues that they are facing. I'm sure that we'll get there. I'm sure that we'll get there. And this mentality of thinking that one country is trying to come to take a right from the other country. When you have immigration, solid immigration, for example, I live in this country. Every year, Canada takes in close to 500,000 people. And those are the people that are bedrock of this economy, of this country. The United States, all of us know about the U.S. visa lottery program. How many people live all over the world and go to that country? And those people are the bedrocks of those countries. So anybody that has this foolish mentality that immigrants are coming over to take a job does not know what it means by the immigrant. When you have inflow of people with high skills, technology, and so on, development is going to follow. Development is not being done by indigents of that country. There is no country by that's been developed by the indigents. It's the immigrants. The people with skills, the people that have come with something different from what you've had, that develop a country. So Africans must stop, start thinking backward. And we must make sure that when you understand that, there are diverse benefits of immigration. In this case, we're not immigrating. I can't really call it immigration. We are brothers. If I go to Nigeria, those are my brothers. If I go to King Congo, Kinshasa, those are my brothers. We are the same people. We were separated by, in 1884 by the colonialists. So that's a different scenario altogether. So again, let people change this mentality of thinking that visa liberalization means people are coming to take their jobs. No, they are coming to make money stronger. They are coming to reinforce what you already have. They are bringing skills. They are bringing technology. They are bringing new knowledge that you do not have, and it's going to be the benefit of every single person. competition that will help grow the economies of our countries. I want to thank you immensely, uh, Mr. Elijah Inraku, for your insight and of course uh, also extend a sincere thank you to you, Mr. Wally, uh, for the great insight on our topic for discussion. Uh, does the, I think uh, the African media will continue to do uh, its best to, sure, to ensure that uh, they contribute their own quarter towards uh, the development and transformation of the African continent. I will appreciate uh, you all for trusting your Pan-African television and of course uh, uh, take the lead and of course uh, try to see how we can explore the scope uh, that has been provided to us this day or this uh, uh, period of great innovation with uh, a lot happening across Africa and dynamics are changing so that we can take this to uh, prosper the beautiful continent which is Africa. Thank you again, gentlemen, for the great insight. Thank you. Keep watching Afri Media, you all, and uh, have a lovely moment, and see you some uh, other time. Thank you.